Welcome everyone. Today we're talking about how to become a florist in 2024. I'm going to take you through the same five steps that I took to get started. And by the end of this video, I hope you're going to have a roadmap on how to make your dream of becoming a florist a reality. I'm Ellen Frost. I'm the owner of Local Color Flowers. I have been a florist and a business owner for over 16 years. I love being a florist. I love working with flowers and I love sharing my love of flowers with people in real life and online. In real life, I do this through my flower shop in Baltimore and also through my flower adventures where I travel around and speak to people about local flowers. I also do this online through YouTube videos, through my weekly newsletter, All About Flowers, and also through my online courses that I teach. Uh, I love being a florist, and I'm excited today to share with you the five steps that I took to become a florist. Step one is really learn about flowers. I can't emphasize enough of how important it is to learn as much as you can about flowers and design because this knowledge, this expertise is gonna set you apart in the marketplace. It's really gonna make you stand out in a sea of other florists. So to begin, I would say read all you can about flowers and design. So books, blogs, magazines, other florist social media posts. I always like to tell people that the first book I ever read about flowers was Flower Confidential by Amy Stewart. I highly recommend you start with this book because it does give you an overview of the entire flower industry globally. And I think that it will set the stage for where you fit into the flower world. Also, I'd say watch videos. When I started, there was no YouTube. That's how old I am. Um, but now there are so many free resources, YouTube channels from florists, flower farmers, designers. Um, you can check all those out. And then also free webinars. Lots of flower farmers and florists give free webinars. Take advantage of all of these free resources. Next, you want to build your skills. And this really means having your hands on flowers as much as you can. I am a big proponent of practicing design. So just at home, when I got started, the thing I would do is I would, I didn't have a lot of money to practice design when I got started. Um, so what I would do is buy a big bouquet of flowers at the farmer's market once a week, and I would go home and I would create a bridal bouquet. And then I would take a photo of it and then I would take it apart. And then I would make a centerpiece and I would take a photograph of it and take it apart. And I would do this with all of the products that I wanted to offer to customers. So every, I wanted to be a wedding florist when I started out. So I did, I made all the things you would make for a wedding and I would photograph them. And then the next week I would do the same thing. So I designated some money towards practicing those skills. Um, and it really helped. It really helped me get comfortable having my hands on flowers, understanding how flowers work. You can also volunteer at a flower shop. You can also freelance. There's lots of freelance, especially for wedding florists. They're always looking for freelancers. You can take a floral design class. Um, you can do that in person or online. I would really recommend, um, you know, both options are great. Uh, however you can get your hands on flowers more, that's better. And then you can also work for free. This is really how a lot of florists get started. This is how I got started. I basically offered my services to friends who are getting married and I offered to do their weddings for free. And what that did was it was me investing some money and some time, but what it got me was professional photos of my work it got me some, I got to start building up social proof, which basically meant I had quotes from those customers that I could use on a website or in social media. So I'm not saying work for free forever, but definitely when you get started, working for free is a great way to build up your skills. Next, you want to start building your portfolio. And what is a portfolio really, except just photo examples of your work? So you want to concentrate, like I said, on examples of types of designs that you want to create for clients. So as you start to photograph your work, and this can just be at home, uh, you want to be taking photos of designs that you want to offer. So if you want to be a retail florist who does not do weddings, don't show wedding work. 
If you want to do weddings, don't show retail work. Or if you want to do both, then present both. Um, making designs at home and taking your own photos is a great way to get started. I would say if you've never taken photos of flowers before, you can take a free online class or webinar about how to take flower photos so that you're really presenting some beautiful, high quality photos. You could also do a styled shoot, which is how a lot of people get started showing work from photographers. That would be partnering with a photographer and maybe a venue or a brand where you provide the flowers for free. Uh, and then the photographer gives you the photos to use on your social media or on your website. Then start sharing these photos. The easiest way to get started is just through like an Instagram site that's free. Um, eventually you'll want to get a website and have ownership of sort of where those flower, or those photos are held. But to start, start an Instagram account, start putting your work out there. Next, you want to get legit. Now, I know this is not going to be nearly as fun as playing with flowers, taking photos of flowers, being on Instagram. However, if you're going to do this work for real, not just as a hobby or for fun, you really want to get legit with the government. So you want to incorporate that's choosing a structure. Are you going to be a solopreneur? Are you going to be an LLC, a corporation? Uh, these are things you have to decide. There's tons of resources out there to help you figure that out. Small business administration is a great place to start. Then you want to register for your EIN number. Now an EIN number is your employer identification number. This number is going to help you get all sorts of other things like your resale certificate or business license or bank account. So that's next. Your resale certificate is really important because this is the way that you can buy from wholesalers, like buy wholesale vases, buy wholesale flowers, and then resell them to your customers. So you want to get a resale certificate. And in some cases, you might need a business license. Uh, depends on where you're located, but you might need a business license. And then you're going to want to set up a business bank account. Now, I would highly recommend doing this because this is really going to set you on a course for success. You really don't want to be mixing personal and business right off the bat. So set up your business bank account. You can find a business bank account that works for you, either at a local bank or an online bank. Next is to figure out sourcing. Step four. Every florist has to buy flowers and then resell them. So you're going to have to figure out where are you going to buy these flowers that you're going to resell. For us, we buy all of our flowers locally. My shop uh, sources everything from within 100 miles of our Baltimore studio. I highly recommend seeking out relationships with local growers. And if you're not sure how to find a farmer in your region, a flower farmer, you can look at localflowers.org or slowflowers.com. Those both have um, sort of directories of farmers in your region. You're also going to want to set up a wholesale account, and that means that you're buying flowers from a wholesaler. Sometimes you have a local wholesaler in your region. You can just Google if you have a local wholesaler, or you might have to buy from an online wholesaler. Um, a couple of those that you might want to check out are the Floral Source or Mayesh. Those are two sort of big online wholesalers. And then step five, which I'm sure is going to feel anxiety producing in the beginning, is to start spreading the word. I know it's hard to put yourself out there and say, I want to be a florist or I'm trying to be a florist. Um, but that's what you have to do. Do not be afraid. Um, start telling your friends, your family, clubs that you're in, your church people. Um, start to put it on your social media, really start to get the word out there because honestly, those are the connections that are going to help bring work to you. Most of our work honestly comes through some sort of personal connection, a friend of a friend. Uh, these are the types of relationships that start to build a business. So even though it might be scary, start telling people about your dream to become a florist. And then get out there and network, whether it's local events, you can go to, you know, business events in your region, like through the Chamber of Commerce or through, through a small business group. You can also just go to social events like an art gallery opening or um, any sort of event that brings people together where you may be able to talk, meet new people and tell them about your dream of becoming a florist. 
I know it feels really uncomfortable, but I did this for years. I went out so many nights, so many mornings. I still do it. Um, and just to get my face in front of people to tell them that I want to be a florist, that I am a florist. And so that they'll think of me when they have work. Then you can also research online networks. There's lots of small business online networks that you can get involved with. Um, anywhere that you can start to meet new people and tell them about your work and about your dreams, that's what we're going for. So are you feeling ready? I know you're ready. You can do it. I have faith in you. I did it. If I can do it, anyone can do it. So get started today on these five steps to becoming a florist in 2024. If you have any questions, if you want to reach out and tell me about your process, uh, my contact information is in the notes. Good luck. And I can't wait to hear back about how your florist journey is going.